All right, hello everybody. Welcome to this week's growth call for BISC for the week of July 25th. My name is Steve Jane, M5 to go on the forums and Slack. We have these growth calls every week at this time to discuss how the BISC network has been doing and to discuss current activities and priorities for the project. For this call, feel free to post your comments in the Zoom chat if you're on Zoom or on Slack if you prefer. Uh, there's a link. Uh, or you can find the the link to the agenda on uh, on github. It's in the growth repository. It's issue number 151 But this call is actually kind of honestly debating whether or not to have it. There isn't too much uh, Significant stuff to cover uh, in the way of, of detail. There are a lot of little items um, Which I'll go through in a second um, after doing our market update Markets have uh, kind of uh, calmed down a bit. Looking at the numbers, actually, I guess I could just share my screen now, show you the numbers instead of talking through them. Uh, let me see. Share. Oops. Yeah, share. How do you share a window? Oh, here we go. Share screen. Can you guys see that? I can't tell what's going on. Okay, I don't know what's going on, so maybe I'll just uh, disable it for the moment. Okay, anyway, I'll just talk through it. So, um, like, I, like I said, numbers have kind of slowed down a little bit for the month. We are at 1,318 Bitcoin for the month, um, which is very, it's still a very good number. It's uh, higher than every month, or it's on pace to being pretty much higher than every month except for last month. Um, 1,318 is what we're at now, about 25 days into the month. Uh, 1,350 was the high for the year that was set in April. Um, with the exception of June, of course, which we had, uh, in which we had 2,864 Bitcoin, uh, which is a complete uh, just knockout month. Um, but we're doing okay for the month. We are at an average of about 52, 52.7 Bitcoin uh, daily average volume, um, which again, very strong number. So um, yeah, things are kind of, uh, I guess, going along. Uh, again, protection mechanisms are still not in place. Uh, hoping for the next release, uh, as I announced on Twitter uh, a few days ago. So uh, I guess fingers crossed for that. Things are looking good for it. I think uh, talking to Christoph last week, um, him and uh, SQ are working on on on, um, on finishing that. Christoph is working on the UI part, and SQ is working on the final technical bits for for account signing. So hoping to have that back in place. And in my mind, that's I think going to kind of jumpstart or not jumpstart, but uh, enable us to continue with um, really promoting, marketing, um, whatever little we were doing before through Twitter. I've been kind of holding back on Twitter, holding back from being too aggressive or too, um, uh, too loud, so to speak, on Twitter. Just because new users find out about this and there isn't a whole lot they can do. Trading 0.01 Bitcoin is not very attractive to most people. So I've held back a little bit there. I've held back on making videos uh, tutorial type videos on YouTube. Um, so, um, yeah, looking forward to that. Welcome, Arno. Um, cool. So that's that market update. Um, talked a little bit about the uh, protection mechanisms and where that is. Um, bunch of other small stuff. So, well, actually, one item that's probably not too small. Uh, something that I'm sure a lot of people are looking forward to. Uh, the API, uh, Bernard put out in a PR for a minimal basic version of the API a day or two ago. And I think SQ is gonna be reviewing that soon. Um, M&M, welcome. We've got a few people on the call, that's good. It's been a bit lonely the past few days, or past few times. Um, it's good to have you guys here. Um, so far we've just gone over, the, done a market update, looked at the numbers a little bit, and uh, now I'm going through just some of the, um, some of the more active areas of the project right now. Um, so we talked about the proposals, account signing mechanism that we're working on right now for the next release. 
Um, and I just started right now to talk about the, uh, the API. Um, Bernard put out a PR for a minimal basic version of the API, which hopefully can get us started soon on offering an API uh, for, um, for the public that people can rely on and start building on. Um, new developers. We've had a couple of, uh, of folks join uh, another Christoph. So we have a Christoph who's kind of our lead developer right now, or one of our main developers right now, and another Christoph, uh, Christoph Sturm, I believe, um, who's been pretty active, as well as this uh, uh, user Nied, N-I-Y-I-D, has been fairly active uh, among a couple of other people. Uh, so it's good to see some new activity, uh, perhaps some new, um, perhaps longer lasting uh, dependable developers. We'll see how that turns out, but definitely good to see that activity um, now, as there's a lot to do on the development side. Um, another item, the website translation effort. Uh, so Huey, I merged uh, Huey's pull request last week, I think it was last week, for Portuguese to get started on, on that uh, website, website translation effort. Um, it was mostly good. There was a little bit of a bug with, the, uh, with mobile, uh, just basically the responsive nature of the website. Uh, the language selector didn't work well for that. Um, so I put out a PR for that to fix it. Um, it should be good to go. I just need someone to review it. Um, so that's should be taken care of. But yeah, we're, I think, well on our way to getting the, the website, website translated. Um, speaking of translations, there was a little bit of talk last week on translating the, uh, the, uh, the BISC software to Japanese. Uh, Yevgeny, who's the translation admin, made a proposal to, to actually do this uh, a couple days ago, and Wiz uh, seems to have found somebody to actually work on it. And uh, so there seems to be good interest there. I guess there's a underlying um, feeling that if we get the BISC software translated to Japanese, then it could be very good for the Japanese market. So um, it's good to see that uh, is both a, an improvement that people think is, is worthwhile and that we actually have somebody to do the work to make it happen. Uh, I've already talked about protection mechanisms, um, hopefully going in uh, place next for the next release. The last item I have on the, on the agenda for today is new proposals. Uh, it seems like there was a little bit of a surprise when ESQ fees were increased with the conclusion of the last voting cycle in cycle three. Uh, there was some activity on the forum. People were a little bit surprised and people were a little bit uh, surprised in not a good way, a little kind of dis disappointed that uh, fees had gone up to what they considered to be very high. Um, I think in reality, fees are just kind of gradually going back to what they were in Bitcoin terms. Um, and from what I can tell, fees are just, you know, the, the, the target fees for BISC are, are no different from your typical exchange. Um, so I don't know if those were new users who were disappointed or not used to, you know, the, uh, the earlier fee structure and just kind of got used to the, um, the, the lower VSQ structure that we put in place to help VSQ adoption. Um, whatever the case may be, um, I just encourage anybody who's on this call, anybody who's watching this call later on, follow the proposals repository or, or at a minimum the proposals in the DAO section of the BISC software. Uh, that's where we make decisions or that's where or decisions are put to a vote. Uh, for example, fee decisions. Um, so the proposals to increase fees uh, were debated on GitHub for weeks in advance. They were put up for a vote in uh, cycle three. Um, and that's when one cycle three concluded with a positive favorable vote in favor of those, uh, those fee increases. That's when the fees were put into effect. So if you, are, are not in favor of, of higher fees, or uh, if you, you want to have a say in, in, in governance, various decisions that BISC is making, um, highly encourage you to, at a minimum, follow the proposals in the, the BISC DAO. Um, but if you want to go a little bit further, keep an eye on the proposals repository in, in the BISC, on the BISC GitHub. Uh, there's a lot of the discussion and debate there for, um, for the future of the project. 
And there are two new proposals right now. Um, one is for a bonus payment for seed node operators. Um, so seed nodes are very important for the initial uh, data that BISC receives when you first start it up. Um, since it's running over, you know, Tor, uh, the, the internet, or the, internet the, the network that, uh, that, that BISC runs on is a bit slow um, and slow to bootstrap. The seed nodes help with sending the data on um, current offers and um, what other, oh, DAO, DAO data, current offers, things like that, um, that you would normally have to wait a couple of minutes for. Um, seed nodes kind of provide that data quicker. And so they're very important. And sometimes they go down or they go out of sync and uh, that kind of screws up uh, some things. For example, the uh, DAO data, there was a bit of an issue in the last cycle. Luckily, we turned out okay. Uh, I think all the results turned out to be, the, the cycle turned out to be successful, but there's a chance that the voting uh, cycle would have been corrupted, um, due in part to uh, seed nodes being out of sync. Um, so the, the, the proposal basically is to uh, add a bonus payment for seed node operators if they maintain above, I think it's 99% uptime, or 99.9% .9 uptime in a, I'm guessing in, in the month, the preceding month, I'm guessing. Um, so that's one proposal. The second proposal is to increase PSQ fees again. Um, so if you are uh, critical of the last fee increase, this might be a proposal you want to check out. Um, I, I'm not going to want to kind of remain impartial. I'm not going to put my opinion out on this, but uh, read through the thread. Uh, I think the user who made the proposal, Delta Handler, has been uh, pretty thorough and uh, you know responsive in his proposals. And um, yeah, it's a good thread to read, to read through to see what you think. And of course, don't forget to vote one way or another in BISC itself in a couple of weeks. I think the next proposal cycle ends, it's slated to end August 11th, something like that, give or take a couple of days. So yeah, uh, that's what we, uh, that's all I have for now. API, new developers, uh, website, website translation, BISC translation, protection mechanisms, new proposals, and yeah, market update. Does any, anybody on, uh, on the call have anything they'd like to cover or say, comments, questions? Let's wait a couple moments. It's good to me. What was that? I heard a little bit. I think it was maybe Arno. Yeah, yeah. It's what yeah. Arno. I said uh, that's good to me, and, and say hi to you because I was mute previously. Oh. Yeah, no problem. Cool. It's good to have you here. Thank you. You were having a, an interesting conversation on uh, on Slack earlier. I was following. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's great <laughs> to to talk with people on the on the chat and uh, to to share the views. We we growing communities that way. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, thanks for all your help on uh, translating. Uh, what? No, I was, thank you. I just wanted to thank you for your help on uh, translating. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm looking for more if you have some legal stuff, but we, we're going to have a call uh, next week with uh, Yevgeny, and uh, I will know more about it. And yeah. So that's why I don't ask too much questions now. I will keep them for later. Sure thing. Yeah, definitely. Very cool. Yep. Uh, no, no further thing for to me. I'm good. <laughs> cool. All right. A couple minutes for a couple moments for anyone else to make comments or questions. If not, then we'll call it a wrap. And uh, thank everybody for joining. And we'll see you again here next week. Yep. See you next Take week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.